In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today the church celebrates the feast of St. Charles Borromeo. Just a little bit about his life. He was born at the castle of Aaron, Aranoa, in northern Italy. Charles Borromeo studied canon and civil law. After his uncle was elected Pope Pius IV, Charles received a number of powerful preferments, yet his eagerness were bent towards reform. He guided the final session of the Council of Trent when he was appointed to Milan, a diocese that had locked a resident bishop up for 80 years, Charles renewed catechesis and led the most lax clergy by his own austere example and diligent preaching. We, might, we ought to walk in front, he told his priests, and our spiritual subjects will follow us more easily. Charles died in 1584. So as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind the times we have failed to, to follow the faith, the times we have failed to pray, the times we have failed to lead. Lord Jesus, we're sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Preserve in the midst of your people, we ask, O Lord, the spirit with, with which you filled the bishop, St. Charles Borromeo, that your church may be constantly renewed, and by conforming herself to the likeness of Christ, may show his face to the world, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. My beloved, obedient as you have always been, not only when I am present, but all the more now when I am absent. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For God is the one who, for his good purpose, works in you both to desire and to work. Do everything without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without a blemish. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine like lights in the world, as you hold on to the word of life, so that my boast for the day of Christ may be that I did not run in vain or labor in vain, but even if I am poured out as a libation upon the sacrificial service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with all of you. In the same way, you also should rejoice and share your joy with me. The word of the Lord. Our response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? 
One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there's enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlooker should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he was still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians speaks to us very clearly this morning. It was as if it was written for us today. For we do live in the midst of a perverse generation. But in the words of our Lord Jesus, we must take up our cross daily and follow him. To take up our cross means to suffer without complaint, without, without any negative talk, not speaking to one another as if they are strangers. In these days of identity politics all around us, we must be Christian completely. It no longer is a time when we can just be a Christian and go to church on Sundays. We must be prayerful. We must accept suffering without complaint, without worry, without fear, because Jesus Christ already won the struggle. Jesus Christ, by his death on the cross, has won us our salvation. So no matter what's going on out in the world, we must look at our brothers and sisters, and that is everyone no matter what party, no matter what club, no matter what team, we must look at them with love. We must accept suffering without complaint. We must be people of energy, people of the truth, people of the faith, and people, most of all, live in the love of Christ. Now let us stand and gather our prayers together. uniting ourselves 
to the intercessions of the great cloud of witnesses which surround us, the saints in heaven, we now pray to our Father. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That we, the body of Christ, may be strengthened and sanctified by our reception of the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in position of authority may grow in charity and wisdom in serving their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those oppressed by poverty may find re relief and comfort in the sanctu sanctuary of God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our community who live in anger and separation from their families may have the grace of mutual healing and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rejoice with all the angels in the communion of saints in the presence of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Donna Carvella, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions in silence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we long to share the communion of charity that the saints in heaven have with you. Make us holy, deepen our desire for sanctity, and let that desire govern everything we say and do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we have to offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sins. Pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Charles and grant by the power of this sacrifice that as you made him an attentive pastor outstanding in the merit of his virtues, so you may make us abound in good fruit by all our works, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival 
of St. Charles Barmeo, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take it. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who comes into the world to save us from our sins. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall. Let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us the determination which made St. Charles faithful to in ministry and fervent in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now and proclaim the gospel of the Lord.